Some bad like a Barbie. Barbie. Mm-hmm. I love that song so much. <laughs> <laughs> to the point I had it on repeat and I don't know any of the lyrics, but I'm like, I say I'm bad like a Barbie. And I'm bad and I'm bad like a Barbie. <laughs> hey, it's up to your boy DJ Joe Kennedy. And he was a big mood. It's going to be up to the BAFTA. Let's stop playing around. Really? Ronan Keating, if you're seeing this, could you ring Lydia West and sing her Life's Roller Coaster because she missed it at Wembley? She would really love that. Hi, I'm Lydia West. And I am Nicola Coughlin, and we're playing Most Likely Two with Cosmo. Neither of us are particularly like no. I would think. Because Eddie's quite like, like angry. Angry. And I'm not very You're angry. You're not very angry. No, I don't like shouting. Maggie's a bit chaotic. Yeah, and I don't. Well, I can be chaotic Isn't sometimes, that... ish. <laughs> <laughs> what a great answer! Wow. <laughs> I think they do have the essence of us both. Yeah. But very different. Very different. <laughs> I think I'm more similar. I'd say yeah. She's more than similar, Eddie. but not, but still not very like her yeah. at all. Yeah. Do you think I would? You would. Because you're so, you are an Irish mother. Yeah, I know. You're so hospitable. And that's the way that I'm very not like Maggie, and that Maggie's uh, hate, worst thing in the world is to have a dinner party, and it's my best thing in the world. Yeah. And you're but, such a good cook, and you're so kind, oh, and like welcoming. Stop Everyone it. can come. I would go to your pub, because you just see your lovely face. Yeah. I think you, well, should we run a pub together? I'd love that, but I think I'm quite antisocial. So I think. No, but I am also <laughs> like antisocial as well. I just want to watch TV. So, so I'm like, everyone go home now. People go home, like, I had a nice time, get out. It would be called Come for a Little Bit and Get Out. And then leave. It's a really catchy name. Yeah. We don't really go out. Well, I mean, I'm that's a for me. We did have, we did have oh, we one did night have that one we went wild. Yeah. We went to see Self Esteem <laughs> in concert and then the next day we're both pretty dead. Yeah, we were dead. I actually got sick. I was with our intimacy coordinator of Big Mood <laughs> <laughs> and I was also with uh, a friend called Jack and we were just having a conversation outside and I said to both Jen and Jack, I'm sorry, I just need to go and be sick. So then I went and I got sick on Jack and Jen's feet. I told Camilla, our writer, the next day and she was like, Jen, our intimacy coordinator, is the perfect person to be sick on. Yeah, so. really sweet and understanding and wouldn't mind at all. No, I left my house keys at that party and then tried to go back without realising it was like five in the morning and it was closed. And I got there and was like, I can't believe this happened. I can't believe it. That was yeah, a but those, night. Night, those nights are quite rare nowadays. Yeah, but that yeah. was good. <laughs> Nick, I do love it. When someone really puts in an effort, Camilla, the creator of the show, came to my band of Rules party as Sheena Shea at her wedding. <laughs> And it was like, I had fell on the ground because it was so good. Like the attention to detail was truly it was so good. incredible. It just and the makes... tears, the tears and the stained tears. mascara. <laughs> so good. Fancy dress just brings me so much joy. I love it. I actually hate fancy dress. Do you hate it? But Nicola's kind of got me into it because when you said you're having a Bravo theme party, yeah. I was like, okay, I need to make an effort. Who are you going to be? I was going to be Captain Sandy from Below Deck. <laughs> yeah. But. Would you got a wig and everything? Uh, I didn't get it that far. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would get a wig and a little like um, polo with oh. like, the name of the boat. I'll have another dress up party. We'll do something. Well, I think you've admitted before well, we've you talked about this. Yeah, that you stole, you stole some costume some bits. costume skims trousers, but with consent. With consent. So <laughs> it was a whole process of ordering the skim. So our writer Camilla <laughs> came in with the most beautiful tracksuit I've ever yeah, seen in my fantastic. whole life. So comfy, so versatile, and I thought that would be great for Eddie. So I spoke to our costume designer <laughs> and I said, "Look at Camilla's tracksuit. Can we have the same?" And we ordered them. They came from uh, LA, I believe. Uh, <laughs> they came from LA. <laughs> anyway, I asked Gabby, "Can can I keep them once we've wrapped?" And she was like. Uh, we have to keep everything for six months for maybe season two, but yeah, technically yeah. So I saw, <laughs> I heard the technically yeah, and thought, these are mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola. I spend oh three days learning lines. Nicola spends an, an, an hour in the chair. Because I basically went, I was filming British and Big Mood at the same time for three weeks, and my brain was like mush. It was literally, there wasn't like, oh, I have this week off in which to learn. So it was just like learning all the lines all the time, the two different characters. By the end of Big Mood, it was like seven weeks filming. My brain was like, 
I'm so sorry, no, we will not. <laughs> we won't be remembering anything anymore. I got like this weird feeling like I was cheating on one with the other, which makes zero sense. But I'd be on the Bridgeton set being like, I can't really talk about, I can't really talk about Big Movie because it's my, my, it's my other job. And it's really stupid. <laughs> and cheating. And like literally no one cares or thinks that, but I was thinking it. You off. really inspired me though. Oh. You really did. I even, I, I was saying that to some friends afterwards. Oh. I was like, I wish I could just be the actor like Nicola that sits in the chair and learns lines. I just put so much pressure on myself. Oh. And I'm so like scared to get anything wrong that I'll spend so long trying to learn it. And I find learning right lines like it's really, really hard. hard. Yeah. Or if it's the least my least favourite part of the process. Yeah. Nicola, I say you. I, I just say what you. Do you say, what would you say at karaoke? I don't know, but at the moment, if I was to go to karaoke tonight, I would put on that Nicki Minaj Barbie song that's all over TikTok. Oh, yeah. You know, like, the Barbie. The Barbie. Mm -hmm. I love that song so much. <laughs> <laughs> to the point I have it on repeat, and I don't know any of the lyrics, but I'm like, I say I'm bad like a Barbie. And then, but then, but then, but Barbie. <laughs> What would you do? Well, I remember Camilla and I used to go, we went to drama school together in Birmingham and we used to go to this old man pub, at which no one else really cared to sing karaoke. So essentially we used to just headline gig <laughs> every week for about a month, um, just go in and sing. And some old man told Camilla that her voice was more beautiful than Adele's. Camilla can sing. Camilla can really sing. And we did um, Total Eclipse of the Heart. She won't, I don't, oh, she know, won't I don't know about as good as Adele. <laughs> You can take that up with her. I'm not doing it. But I, she once put on Life as a Roller Coaster by Rona Keating, and I was, I was a student Tune. and very drunk and c could not get the words out. It's a roller coaster. Like, how does the verse go? Don't start it. Up was a roller coaster, just gotta ride it. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I have a really funny Ronan Keating story. What do you actually? So I went, Ronan Keating was the first concert I'd ever been to. And I, <laughs> I went at age 10. Oh, and oh. I went with my old best friend's parents and my best friend. Uh -huh. And they were very, very strict. So obviously the only song I knew was Roller Coaster. And oh. I was waiting for that song. They got to 10 p.m. And then her mother, who was very strict, said, we have to leave. And then as we were leaving, <laughs> Wembley, Roller Coaster came on. Missed it. That's devastating. Yeah. I'm sure he'd sing it for you now. Would he? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he would sing it for me. <laughs> Am I over here? I don't know if I can deliver this. Rona? Rona Keating, if you're seeing this, could you ring Lydia West and sing her <laughs> Life's Roller Coaster because she missed it at Wembley? She would really love that. I did a quiz on this. I found out mine is physical touch. Whenever. I think mine is physical touch is too. Well. Yeah. I was surprised. I love to give gifts. I'm a good mm. gift giver. If I have to like express how I feel about someone in words, I think I lose all my words. But mm -hmm. I like to get someone for something. For example, Megan yeah. from Love Island, and go, I, ca I care this much about you. And this is Megan from Love Island. I'm yeah. I'm better at that. So Camilla Whitehill, who created the show back when we both had Twitter, she tweeted, all I want for my birthday is Megan from Love Island, a plate of ham. And then a year later, it was coming up to her birthday and I was like, what am I going to get her? And I was like, maybe I should get her that. I wonder if I could. So I DM'd Megan from Love Island. And I was like, it's a weird proposition, but could you come to a party with a plate of ham? And she was like, okay. So I hired her and she came and delivered Camilla played of ham and her reaction was the best thing I've ever seen and then in fact episode two of, of Big Mood where Joanna Page show up to Maggie's birthday is a reference to Megan from Love Island. Did you know that? No I didn't. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. I've never topped that gift. Well you did. The whole crew and cast were obsessed with Vanderpump Rules and Nicola ordered a cameo oh, yeah. from James Kennedy. <laughs> you know Vanderpump Rules, you will know who that is. DJ, DJ James, James Kennedy. Kennedy. It was <laughs> like, here's your boy DJ James Kennedy. And then the chef goes out to the wonderful Camilla. And then he introduces himself again. But then the same camera. Hey, it's up to your boy DJ James Kennedy. And he was like, big mood. It's going to be up to the BAFTA. Let's stop playing around. No, he was like, crab girl. Yeah, crab girl. Because anyway. we had a little girl on set called Skylar. Who, who was a model and actress. And one day Camilla had um, these crab glasses on that we found in Maggie's bedroom set. And Camilla walked into the room and Skylar went, oh, it's crab girl again. And I've just never seen a six-year-old with more power. And she was the alpha from that day on. And, and when she first met Nicola? Oh yeah, she said to me, she was like, are you a model and an actress? And I was like, I'm just an actress. She was like, I'm both. And I was like, fair. 
<laughs> I want that confidence. I know, right? <laughs> we should all be Skylar, she's great. She's amazing. <laughs> Uh, if Big Mood season two happens, yeah. I would love to see Eddie and Maggie get married Aww. and be very intimate with each other. Okay, great. <laughs> with our intimacy coordinator. Perfect. <laughs> I want to see Maggie, a play of Maggie's. I really want to see, because she's a writer, so I really, and also like, I spent a lot of my 20s being involved in various streets and terrible the theatre above pubs in London, so I would love to see that on screen. And I want them to both get like more terrible boyfriends, because I feel like the men in the show are such like for free, they just sort of dart in and out, and I feel like there's a lot more idiotic men that can... We need to represent. Absolutely. Idiots <laughs> need representation too, don't they? <laughs> they do. Yeah. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.